I am Frank with the RV shop in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. This is a 2024 Midwest Automotive Designs Lux Cruiser. This is what they call the partition uh, model. What most people would otherwise call the limo van edition because it's got this fancy partition here. I'm gonna take a look at it and see how to use most of the major uh, components of this van. Starting with uh, this entry. This is, uh, of course, an electric entry door. So we're just gonna give it a little tug. It's gonna open for us. Do not tug on that door. It's electric. It's not like being tugged on. You just give it a little pull on the handle and it'll open for you. So as we come inside, we're gonna see another button here so this button activates the door as well so i can press that button the door is coming at us press the button again it stops press the button yet again reverses direction all from that button there right at the entry we have a little bit of storage you can put whatever you want in there however at the moment we have two wireless headphones these two wireless headphones work with that um, radio right there a garmin fusion radio we'll talk more about that here in a minute so here we are in this uh, beautiful partition edition of this uh, lux cruiser d6 these seats are of course diamond stitched in beautiful black leather with uh, off-white piping now these seats, of course, have uh, USB-A uh, ports right there. These are massagers. So all of these chairs in here, these and these back here, have uh, massagers built into them. This right here is, uh, it's got, uh, they're heated seats, all these here, these four heated seats, as well as the ones for the, for the driver up front and uh, they also have uh, storage underneath the seats and then you have this touch screen to help control some of the devices back here and we'll talk more about that here in a second um, there's these lap trays that pull out from here let's see if i can do this with one hand lap trays pull out and stow away when you're not using them. So you got lap trays there and here. The only one without a lap tray is this person sitting, sitting here. Now the seats back here in this uh, second row, extendable footrest back here. These will actually lay flat. These, these kind of, uh, jackknife so you can pull this up and extend it and it'll lay flat this one will do the same and once those are both extended it basically makes like a bed going across here it's all flat these shades are all manually um, operated and you have storage going across the top so let's talk about some of the electronics back here this is not electronic but we're going to talk about it nonetheless there is a trash can look at that so a lot of the electronics center on this uh, touch control system so you have uh, many of these little panels here so you got one panel here got one panel there it, there's also one up front in the cockpit and then there is a main panel back there um, but we're going to talk about these little ones here. So here we have a light master switch, which pressing that will turn off all the lights at once. Or you can turn them off individually. And you can operate the partition with this button. You can uh, operate your AC system. So here you see you have cool heat auto and off so here we can operate our ac we can turn it on cool we can turn it on heat or we can turn it off now for this 
the cool and the heat to work uh, it's important to note that the engine must be running if the engine is not running that stuff will not work uh, th that that system is run off of the engine so engine must be running otherwise that will not work make sense now other things we have we have this green button which is basically uh, you can remotely control this radio which makes no sense if you're operating this from here right but the main purpose for that is because gives you the ability to control it from that touchpad right there which makes a little bit more sense makes more sense if you operate it from the main control panel in the back but even more sense if you um, control it from the touchpad in the cockpit for the driver so if you're um, you know you can talk to your driver if you're a passenger back here turn on the intercom this is the intercom button turn that on when that red light is flashing the the microphone is activated so you have two-way conversations possible um, so you could say um, driver can you turn on the radio for us and your driver can come up to his touch control panel that looks like this up front and just turn on the radio or turn it off as I just did turn it on and you know play whatever you ask them to now this radio this fusion radio basically you can um, right there it's on FM but you can change it to AM uh, USB inputs uh, aux one which goes to TV right or come back here and uh, go into settings which is just going to change your brightness so those are the main controls that are available to you through this little uh, touch panel um, to these small uh, control panels uh, they are customizable you can go into settings and go into control setup and add and remove different icons if you wanted to to add things that are more convenient for you because like the one up front has uh, different uh, um, buttons on it like for example the driver can turn on the water pump for some of the the things needed back here like the, the water pump that operates the water system in the bathroom in the sink and whatnot so enough about that and let's talk more about this radio oh by the way that light is still flashing that means the microphone is still on and your um, driver can hear everything you're saying so so as I said, this radio is is um, Bluetooth capable, so you can pair your phone to it and stream stuff off of your phone. You have um, AM, FM. So as I said, there's two TVs. There's this TV, and then there's one in the back. Um, so the little remote is for the big TV. The big remote is for the small TV there in the back. Uh, you have Apple TV that is viewable on both of these TVs. The uh, And you would have to switch the TVs to HDMI 1 to get to the Apple TV um, input, okay? Um, currently, for example, we're watching TV off of the TV antenna that's built into this van. As I mentioned, when we were coming into the van, there's wireless headphones over there. So the wireless headphones will enable you to um, a listen to the TVs um, there's an, a switch on the side of the headphones that says a B and off so when you have the headphones switched to a you're listening to this TV when you have a switch to B you're listening to the TV in the back over there that's in that door uh, important to note this back TV here the small TV does not have speakers. So the only way you're gonna get sound from that is through the use of the headphones, the wireless headphones on the B channel. Also, there is an HDMI port right here, which is very useful. If you wanted to, you could either like plug in an HDMI cord from a laptop to that and view that on your TV, that TV or the back TV. You could 
plug in an HDMI adapter to your smartphone and plug it into that and view that uh, for people to watch up here. So if you want to have a kind of like a like a presentation while you're traveling in the van, you can certainly do that. And we're going to go over the other touch control panel, which is this. This one is bigger, of course, as you can see, and that means it's got more features on it. So again, we have our light master switch, which we do over there. This right here, you can adjust the set point on your HVAC system, the AC system or heating system. We can view the contents of our tanks. So this, uh, this van has uh, three sto water storage tanks, uh, fresh, gray, and black. So the fresh is our, the water we bring with us, our, our uh, uh, potable water, our drinking water, the water that comes out the sink, the water that's used to flush the toilet. Um, that is our, our uh, water that we bring with us. Then we have gray. The gray tank is any water that goes down the sink goes into the gray tank. And then we have our black tank. Anything that goes down the toilet, that goes into the black tank. That's why we have the three individual tanks. So you can watch status and see how much stuff is in your tanks. Then we have this water pump. Blue, if it's light blue, that means it's it's on. Now that it's that pump is an on-demand pump. It is not running just because it's turned on. It's an on-demand pump. So it only runs when you open a faucet or flush your toilet. It knows when to turn on. So you can leave it on all day long. It will only run if you open a faucet. So then we have our tank heater. So the tank heater is not for hot water. That is just imagine an electric blanket that is glued to the underside of these tanks. That, that keeps the tanks from freezing. Let's say you were using this fan in extremely cold weather, like sub freezing temperatures. It, that heating blanket underneath the tanks, if enabled, would keep them from freezing. And then these two little icons, those are for batteries. This van operates with two uh, batteries. One is this battery here, which CHS stands for chassis. That's our chassis battery. That's the normal engine battery that a Mercedes Sprinter van would have on it. Um, so that battery can be viewed here, how much voltage we have currently. And then our house battery, which is uh, represented by the HSE. Uh, that stands for house. So our house battery is the battery that's used to operate all this stuff back here in the back, right? So uh, just about everything runs off of 12 volts. So um, at a glance, we can see what our batteries are doing, what the status is on that stuff. Um, it, I wouldn't worry too much about the voltage, just in particular, pay attention to the color. If it's green, that means we're happy. Everything is good, right? Thumbs up. Um, should it be yellow, that means batteries are getting kind of low. Usually what you would want to do at that point is turn on the engine because anytime the engine is running, that charges up these batteries. There's also a short cord outside where we can plug the van into power to keep the batteries charged. Otherwise, you just run the engine. Other things we have here, of course, is access to our partition. We can raise that or, or lower that. Uh, we can go to our lighting page here and see all the individual lights. We can go to this electrical page. We really have nothing to do there. We can turn on and off the inverter. However, the inverter um, is basically taking uh, 12 volt electricity from this house battery, making 110 to operate uh, 110 stuff like our TVs. Those operate on 110. There's a microwave here in the back uh, that runs on 110. So our uh, inverter makes that all possible. But, you know, if you, this comes on automatically, you don't have to do anything with it. So we can get to our air conditioning page. Once again, the settings page is just to turn on. There is a, there is a router that's uh, in the back that I'll show you when we walk around the outside. That internet router um, is, you can activate it and it's a subscription service that will provide hotspot service for all your guests in the back. There's another hotspot router in the front attached to the Mercedes radio, and we'll talk about that also here in a minute. There's a carbon monoxide detector that's right here under this seat. These seats also, if you don't choose to fold them out, there is storage underneath here. Um, let me try to 
all my flashlights is fairly dark so there's storage underneath the seats on both sides and we're gonna take a look at the bathroom area by going into the uh, bathroom from the back because it's a little cramp here another thing I want to mention so this Garmin radio has three zones that are accessible through the settings there uh, so you can control the volume separately so there's zone one which is those two speakers up front then there's zone two which is these two speakers here in the back and then there's zone three which is outside so outside we have uh, exterior speakers which you can activate using the switch so there's uh, three full zones and all controllable through your Garmin radio your fusion radio so that covers just about everything I wanted to cover here on the inside um, we're going to open this door and talk about stuff there in the back in the bathroom area and in the cockpit to end the video additionally this door does have an emergency release should this door not be operating uh, let's say the battery died on the van let's say that they're just a motor quit for whatever reason turning this knob about 180 will disengage the electrical part of this door and you can operate it like a regular manual door by pressing that button there so other than that it's got a shade it's manual oh, we can press the button here to open it for us Now additionally, now all the manuals for this van are found here. These vans come complete with um, four fobs. So for example, there's three Mercedes fobs here, plus there's one in the cup holder there. So you have a total of four. Now going further to the back. Now right here you have a 110 connection so you can connect uh, 110 stuff out here where you're maybe tailgating or doing something outdoors. There's also a media port there with an HDMI and a TV out like a coax out. If you want to hook up a TV there. And of course back here is our our back area. Look how beautiful that is. So we have a refrigerator. This is a 12 volt refrigerator. You can control the temperature right there. There's a nice sink. Outlet. And of course a microwave up there. Toilet is a foot flush. Hidden behind the toilet there is the short cord. It's a 25 foot short cord that attaches on the side of the van for charging of batteries. And you got some storage up there. And there's shades back here for privacy. Now hidden back here in this compartment is a bunch of electronics. Now this uh, van did not come with the uh, optional uh, router, however you do have a router built into the radio up front and I'll show you how to get that going here in a second. Now normally you don't have to get into any of this stuff. Back here is another area for more electronics. There's the Apple TV right there. That's the big inverter. That's taking 110 power from our battery, from our house battery, and making uh, 110 out of it, out of that 12 volts. Now you do have some fuses right there, 12 volt automotive style fuses. And that panel right there, there's an access door to get to some 110 breakers. Those are residential style resettable breakers. Um, important to note, <laughs> So this uh, toilet, never use regular toilet paper. It's very important that you use only RV specific toilet paper. 
and use the appropriate uh, chemical treatment to put in this, uh, uh, to flush down this toilet to treat the tank. Um, very important, like I said, nothing but RV toilet paper. Do not use regular toilet paper, otherwise it'll result in a clogged tank. So, now under here, that tube that's right there, that stores your uh, dump hose. There's a hose that will attach to this uh, point right there. Twist off that cap and you connect the hose that's, on the, that's stored in that tube to allow you to dump your tanks. You can pull this black handle and that'll open the valve that'll dump the contents of the black tank, of course. Right? You know what's in the black tank, right? Everything that went down the toilet. After you've dumped your black tank, you close that, then you pull the gray handle and that will dump the contents of the gray, whatever was in the gray tank, right? Everything from the sink. So important that you always do it in that order, black first, then the gray. Because the gray will kind of help rinse out the, the black hose, or the, the dump hose that you've attached here. This is where you attach your, your uh, shore cord for charging batteries. Now these two ports are for your onboard water tank or your onboard water, I should say. With this one, if you connect a hose to this, this will provide pressurized water to the to this water related things on the inside. So you don't have to use your, your water that's in your tank, your onboard water tank. This connection here is to fill that onboard water tank. Um, so two separate things. Now, these two connection points those two small ones those are just imagine like they're power sprays for the inside of your black and gray tank so gray and black so that's a gray tank flusher black tank flusher so you connect a water hose to that and that will rinse out the inside of those tanks it's important that they stay clean otherwise uh, you end up with uh, you know, with sensors that don't read very accurately. So we're gonna lastly talk about some stuff up here in the cockpit. So to fuel your van, you're gonna fuel it here in this compartment, diesel fuel. You also have uh, under the hood, you have your uh, windshield washer fluid is under the hood here. On this side is where you add your depth fluid. Um, your house battery is located in this corner here under the hood. That's where the components in the back. And the engine battery for the, for the Mercedes truck park is actually located here. Under that right there. Not that you'd ever need to use it, so. Then this is to, this handle here is to pop your hood, to release the hood. Now the seats are electric. You can operate them forward and back. Backrest here, heated seats, power locks, power windows, and of course your power mirrors. Now important up here. So you have um, you have some components up here that are in addition to the regular Mercedes stuff. So. You have your Mercedes radio and of course your, your controls. This will not be any different than any modern Mercedes van. However, we have some additional components. So, we have a, one of those touch control panels that we saw in the back. So this has controls that might be useful for the driver that's driving this this van like your water pump you can turn it on and off from here you can turn off the lights back there um, tank heaters turn on the AC for back there you can control the radio the the Garmin fusion radio back there from this panel so and you can also customize it and add more buttons if you wanted to and remove buttons but most importantly so this um, control panel here, if you want to talk to your guests in the back, whoever's riding in the back, turn that on. 
and we see that red light flashing that indicates to us that the microphone is on and whatever you're saying up here is uh, being broadcast in the back there's a little speaker in the ceiling back there that looks kind of like this uh, little speaker here in the ceiling here that's for the intercom system so when you're done talking you can just close that right there right this button that says master power we can um, turn on the power for back there if the blue ring is off there's no power on these touch control panels in the back if the blue ring is on that'll bring to life the control panels and there's power back there also this button is for the refrigerator if that blue ring is not on there's no power back there at the at the little refrigerator that we saw so it's important that that be on if you expect the refrigerator to be working now this back calm button there's nothing for you to do with that that is that operates in the background automatically that's basically combining the the charging system uh, from the engine to charge both uh, your batteries your house battery and your chassis batteries but yeah so this is your your main uh, control panel up here additionally we can also open our door our side entry door by pressing this button that'll open the sliding electric door in the back for your guests uh, air conditioning controls and of course this radio um, other controls as I said are typical uh, stuff that you would expect in the van these little locks come off of these sun visors so you can actually use them there is a little cubby up here that's got stored there's a wireless phone charger built into that as well as uh, that port on the left USB-C is connected to this for Android Auto or Apple CarPlay and then the other two are charging ports there's more cubbies over here left and right now um, if you want internet for your guests, you can use this system that's on this radio. Navigate all the way to the settings page, go to system, and you're gonna scroll down here. Uh, let's see, where is it? Go to where it says Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. I'm going to scroll till you see activate hotspot looks like it's already turned on at the moment and connect to vehicle hotspot and you can do it you can set a password or you can do like this and um, scan that QR code to connect uh, this is contingent though upon you you have to download there's an app called Mercedes me that you'll want to download and that app will allow you to basically interact with this van and um, access some features that are not uh, normally available. Like for example, these fobs do not have remote start, but I believe you can you can control that via your phone. Um, you can, you know, remote start it via your phone via the Mercedes Me app, as well as activate the data on this uh, router that's here for your guests that they want to have internet so anyway so that's going to bring us to uh, the end of this video i hope everything made sense and you found this useful again i am frank at the rv shop in baton rouge louisiana hope you have a fantastic day